that it's worth it's worth talking about this at this point because this is uh, pretty much the secret of paste fishing. If you think paste fishing is all about fishing big pieces of paste for big fish, then think again. Hi, I'm Lee Thornton, and you join me here today at the uh, lovely Forest Lane Fishery, where I'm going to go through a few paste fishing sort of tips and uh, tactics that I like to employ. Um, I've brought you to this venue just because, selfishly, I've got a, um, a match coming up here, and it was like a little cheeky practice. But I'm going to show you how to use little bits of paste and catch lots of fish really quickly. Pace fishing has long been thought of, of a, uh, a method for catching just big fish um, using big soft bits of paste. Now I like to do things a bit differently when I'm fishing for slightly smaller fish. So uh, what I like to do is mix it a lot stiffer and use it like a, almost like a six mil pellet or a thumbnail piece of, bit, uh, piece of paste that will stay on the hook, it's swingable and it's more likely to get like, be picked up by the smaller fish because it matches the size of their mouths a lot better. So I'm going to run through um, how I go about it. The important thing to get right when doing this is the paste. Now I use uh, the adrenaline range and in particular I use the, uh, the betaine green. Now any of the ground baits from uh, adrenaline are perfect for this style of fishing because of their fine nature. Uh, all, all, the, um, all these ground baits feature a double grind process which means they're really, really fine. And what that means is I can use um, a much smaller bit of paste and it will stay on the, uh, the hook a lot longer because there's um, the, the bigger the particles in, in a paste, the quicker it will break down basically. It needs to be nice and fine. So that's why I use this and it just allows me to, to mix it up in a, in a nice stodgy way and then be using little tiny bits which are the size of my, uh, size of my thumb and that'll fit perfectly into the mouths of these fish that are sort of like 12 ounces to a pound and a half. Before we start fishing, let's take a look at the rigs that I like to employ for this tactic. Let's start by running through the rig. At the top end, we've got the 12 to 16 shot core um, high vis. Uh, Seems a bit heavy for the size of fish that we're catching, but we're catching a lot of fish here. It's, uh, it's a very, very well stocked lake and it's all about catching fish quickly. So that will be nice and soft on the stripe, but power up quite quickly to get the fish into the net. Main line, we've got uh, 018 low vis. We've got a great big number six back shot. That just helps me pull the float back into the bank and, um, and set the, uh, the float at the right height and just hold it there nice and steady. We've got quite a heavy float. We've got um, a midi wrap DC 4x16. Uh, I like a nice sort of heavy rig for, for this style of fishing to try and stabilize the rig. You get lots of fish in your peg and all the shotting pattern, which I'll come to a in, into a second, is right low down to try and stabilize that rig. Um, these floats are perfect for the job. They're nice and strong. The, the eyes are reinforced, so we don't want that, uh, the, the float sort of letting us down during the session. And importantly, it's got a nice sort of fine tip on it, which allows me to uh, to effectively put that light piece of paste, but still still sort of like show it up on the bristle and keep a nice tight line. So as soon as that, that hook bait gets uh, picked up by a fish, I'm seeing that bite instantly. So coming down to the bottom end, we've got six number eights spread out over sort of six inches. Like I said, I want to get that straight to the bottom, nice and stabilised and uh, nice and positive so I'm seeing a bite really really quickly and then I've actually got an 016 hook length to a size 14 again it seems really heavy for the size fish that we uh, that we're looking to catch but with pace I don't think line diameter makes any difference and obviously we want nice robust strong gear for uh, putting together a big weight quickly we don't want to be uh, changing the hook or the hook length uh, we just want to be catching them fish quickly and the rig not letting us down. Okay, so let's have a look at how I plumb up and uh, go about fishing. So 
let's plumb up. So uh, on this lake, there's a hell of a lot of fish. In fact, pleasure fishing. I don't think I've ever been on as many fish in my life. So uh, I know that I don't have to go very far on here. In fact, the further I go out into the deeper water, the more difficult I'm going to make it for myself. So I'm just going to plumb up on a top kit. I'm going to look for two and a half foot. Um, and what I'm looking for is a nice little, little flat area. It, it can be sloping off because uh, as you can see, what I'll do is the float will be slightly over depth. Um, and that's done deliberately so uh, that when I lay the paste in, I can actually pull the float back towards me and set the bristle at exactly the right height. Um, so that's, that's, that's important. So we're looking for that little flat area there. You can see over, over about six inches square, it's fairly flat. And that'll be a nice comfortable place for me to put the paste in and get bites. But like I said, top tip is to always um, have the float slightly over depth and we'll be laying the rig away from us and pulling towards ourselves. So it just helps with setting that float dead right so you can see your bites. Okay, so let's start. So ordinarily, if I'd not already had a few fish, I'd start by feeding a little ball of uh, my feed. I'll go into my, into my feed shortly, but basically that's a, uh, a mixture of micros and adrenaline green. So the same, the same ground bait uh, that I've got on the hook and a few micros. But I know there's a hell of a lot of fish in the peg, so I'm just going to start with a single bit of paste. Same size as my thumbnail, which is a tiny amount of bait, and I don't think I'm going to need to feed to get a bite. And as you can see, that's the way I mix it. It's so it can hold on the hook and be swung into position. I find it far easier to do it and, 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 and be quicker this way uh, than by cupping it in. Just because with, um, with fishing short, you can actually pull that bit of paste back to the slope that you're fishing on rather than potting and then trying to, like, because you, your float's always the other way around if, if your, your paste is in a pot, so it becomes difficult. But yeah, all we're going to do is slowly lower that in, make sure the paste is slightly out from the top kit so we can pull that back towards ourselves. And you see that, that floats sitting there perfectly and straight away we're into a fish. See how that elastic just allowed the fish to leave the peg, two pulls of the, uh, the puller and that one's in the net. Now, because we've had a bite so quickly, I'm not going to feed again. I think uh, there's enough fish there that just the uh, the bits of paste itself, unbelievably so, is enough to keep the fish up, fish happy. So again, nice and smooth. Drop that in. Little tiny plop. That paste is just beyond the end of the of the, uh, the pole tip, so I can pull it towards myself. Now, the most difficult thing with this is just like learning what's a bite and what's a liner. Now it's worth it's worth talking about this at this point because this is uh, pretty much the secret of paste fishing is not having so many fish into your peg that you miss these bites like uh, it's it's very easy to get too many fish there and be uh, unefficient as what you can see now so there's several ways to do this um, the way I like to do it is to have a spread of rigs which cover different depths so I know I can come towards myself and be in less water and therefore have less fish in my peg to allow me to, uh, to sit there and, 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 and wait and strike at the right indication. Oh, straight away. Well, that's how quick you can get indications once this starts working, which is why it's so effective at putting big weights together. What was that in the water? 10 seconds there and we're, we're into a fish. Good stamp as well. Because we're fishing short, you can net them quite quickly and everything's nice and efficient. It's amazing just the, the pulling the power, power of this ground bait without even actually putting any feed in. This is literally just a tiny little thumbnail sized bit of paste and we're getting all of these fish coming. See, that was a lovely bite then. You can see how that elastic just allows the fish to uh, to leave the peg. It's the, it's the 12 to 16 high-vis shot core. I've used this elastic for years, it's always been brilliant. 
And uh, the best thing is in as well is uh, at the minute, um, Midi are actually doing a deal on it where you can buy three spools for the, for the price of two, um, which is absolutely fantastic value, if you ask me. It's one of my favourite elastics uh, for uh, catching carp and big F1s, this red, and I've used all the other sizes for years, so uh, get yourself into the shops and have a look at that one. Slightly bigger fish. I'll, I'll just run through uh, what I'd normally do if I had to feed. So this stage here, when I've dropped in, I would normally make a ball of ground bait, or uh, ground bait and micros in this case, ready to throw in. And when I hook a fish, that's normally when I like to feed, just because it gives uh, a maximum amount of time to, uh, to sort of settle down after playing the fish and have some fish feeding when I drop back in. So I'll demonstrate that when I hook a fish in. So waiting for a bite, got one on, feed, pull, pull. Net fish. Fish in the net. And that's the sort of like uh, the sequence that you need to follow repeatedly and uh, put these big weights together. There we go. So many fish in that peg. There we go. So there we go, pea paste fishing. Get yourself out on the bank and catch fish like these. And if you like these videos, why not like and subscribe to the MIDI channel? Thanks for watching.